This is a short and sweet from our call on Sunday, January 29th. We talked about feeling lonely and how to deal with it. Brave Tribe, I know it can be very hard when you are alone. And one thing that came up in our call on Sunday was when we're at home, it's a little easier to be alone or to feel lonely. But when you're at school and you're feeling lonely, it's a whole different type of experience. So listen into the end. We're going to talk about some of the different thought distortions that might be going on and ways to shift out of that. Sometimes we associate being alone with being lonely. And it's important for us to realize that there's a difference between these two. So being alone is a physical state where you are physically alone by yourself. Being lonely is an emotional state where you feel alone or disconnected from others. And this can happen even when you are with your friends. You might be right next to them and still feeling lonely. Sometimes we are happy to be by ourselves. And then sometimes we really wish that we had the company of others. But there are benefits to being alone. It's important to use this time to think about your feelings, ideas that you have, hopes for your future, maybe even thinking about some of the different problems that you're having and all the different things that are currently going on in your life. This time alone creates space for you to come up with your own perspectives, your own ideas, and how you think and feel about things. Sometimes we are overwhelmed with everybody else's opinions. It's so important we have time alone to really think about what truly matters to us. One of the greatest benefits of spending time alone is how it helps you to better understand who you are. The more you know and understand about yourself, the more likely then you are to do things that you love, learn things that interest you, and spend time with people who really make you feel good. If you're having a problem in your life, of course, it's helpful to get advice from friends and family, but it's also important to develop your own thoughts and solutions. Being alone limits distractions and helps you think up of your own answers. When you're alone, you're free to try things that you might feel uncomfortable trying in front of other people. Being alone leaves you free of judgment. You can dance, sing, play an instrument. You can try new things without feeling embarrassed. So make sure that you are having time to be by yourself. But I'm curious, how do you see your time spent by yourself? Do you tend to go to, no one wants to spend time with me? Everyone's doing something fun but me? Or are you glad to have this time to yourself? Are you excited maybe to do the activities that you don't always have the time for? Is this an opportunity to see this as self-care? Is this a way to rebuild the resources you might need for the week ahead? If you're one of my friends that is also a little bit more on the introverted side, meaning you get your energy from having some downtime, spending time alone is maybe something you need to prioritize so you can recharge your social batteries. So when you're with friends at school and in your activities, you have the energy you need to make the connections you want to make. One thing that's helpful is sometimes when we can look at recent surveys, recent research, we can see that sometimes we're not alone in our experiences. I want to share a recent survey on the causes of loneliness, especially for our Gen Z, you guys, and millennials. One of the things I think is very important from this survey is the first step. 53% said that they were too shy or introverted to connect with others. You might also feel this way. You may feel shy. You might feel like it's hard to come up with the words to interact. We also see that 27% from the survey say they don't really feel like they need friends. 26% say that their hobbies or interests don't actually facilitate friendships. 20% said that friendships are too much work. 19% said that they really live in a place where there aren't the right type of people that they really want to connect with. 14% say they're just too busy for friendship. I'm wondering if there's one here that you can relate most to. If you feel shy and if you feel introverted, are your worries keeping you from connecting with others? What I do know is that worry wants two things. Worry wants us to feel comfortable 
And worry wants us to have certainty. So comfort is I want to feel safe and comfortable or else I want out. It causes us to avoid. It causes us to shut down and not push through the discomfort. When our worry wants certainty, it wants to know what's going to go on, what's going to happen next. And I want to be in control of that. And if I can't have that, then I'm going to avoid. Your need for comfort and your need for certainty may be impacting your ability to connect with others. There is research that tells us the different factors that decrease loneliness in teenagers. The first being that frequent, meaningful in-person interactions lowers people's loneliness scores. When you're getting together in person, you feel more connected. It activates different parts of your brain and it makes you excited and happy. Doing things in person with other people is very important. One thing that at times can be hard is social media use may impact how much we're actually getting together with people. We might see friends on social media and connect with them on Snapchat, but being in physical contact and in person with our friends is the ultimate goal, what you really should be trying to do. I understand that sometimes our activities and our location and the availability of other people may impact how that happens for you. But that's one thing that I want you to keep in mind as you're working towards making new connections and making new friends. I want you to spend some time thinking about how you can create more interactions in person with friends or new people you want to get to know. You might need to look at some of the different activities that you do and see if that's bringing you closer to people that you want to spend time with or if that's pulling you away from the people that you really want to start connecting to. Another factor in decreasing loneliness is spending time with family. This can be a way to have companionship and to meet that need. Spending time just with family, of course, isn't going to be the only way to get rid of loneliness, but it does help us feel more centered and grounded and having a safe place where we can connect with loved ones that understand and support us. Sleeping about eight hours per night also leads to lower experiences of loneliness. People who reported sleeping long enough, but not too long, were significantly likely to have close friends and connections. And this makes sense. If you're tired, it is hard to be in a good mood. It is hard to stretch outside of your comfort zone and really interact with your friends. You might notice on those tired days, you're a little bit more reserved, quiet, and maybe even a little grumpy. Getting the right amount of exercise has also been shown to decrease loneliness. People who reported getting the right amount of physical activity were more likely to feel that they were a part of a group of friends and that they had something in common with others. It could be going on a walk with a friend, but doing something physically active will help you connect with other people. And it is also going to boost some of those feel-good hormones that will help you feel more positive. Limiting social media use can reduce loneliness. In a 2018 journal of social and clinical psychology, found that cutting down social media use led to significant reductions in loneliness and depression over three weeks compared to the control group that did not limit their social media usage. In some of our other previous calls, we've talked about sometimes it is good to be bored. It's a time that allows us to get creative. One of the difficulties that girls shared in our call on Sunday was that feeling of being alone and feeling lonely when you're at school. One piece of advice that several of the girls shared in our call on Sunday is that if you are being left out or you're not being picked or selected, most of the time, it's not about you. So try not to personalize when you are feeling left out and lonely. I know that can be very hard to do, but I know when we personalize things, it lowers our self-esteem. It becomes part of our story and the narrative that we're using to make sense of the different situations that are happening around us. So be mindful of that. We know that our worry wants comfort and certainty. And if you're in a situation where you're feeling lonely, we know that you aren't feeling comfortable and you aren't feeling certainty. 
So the worry part of your brain is going to look for ways to try to keep you safe. It's going to try to get you to avoid situations. It's also going to point out all of the negatives. And that's sometimes where our thoughts get distorted and might keep us trapped in this negative thought hole. So I want to share some common ones that happen that might make us feel socially awkward or socially anxious. When we can be aware of these different thought holes, we can start to look at ways to climb out and start connecting to other people. One anxious thought is catastrophizing, looking for all the things that could possibly go wrong. Your mind might automatically go to the worst possible outcome. That is catastrophizing. It might sound like I'm going to go to a party and no one's going to talk to me. It's very negative. And when your worry is looking for certainty and comfort, you don't exactly know what's going to happen at a party. Yeah, your brain will start to look for evidence that it's going to be awful and it will get you to catastrophize. A question you can ask if you find yourself in this catastrophizing thought hole is what is more likely to happen? Or if that worst case does happen, how could I handle it? We often underestimate our ability to handle tough situations. And brave friend, I know you can handle tough. You've handled all the tough up to this point. Another distortion that sometimes happens is discounting the positive. So many times we focus on the negative. We're wired to focus on the negative that we miss the positives that might be right in front of us. One question we can ask ourselves is, what did I do that was okay? When we focus on the positive, it allows us to climb out of that thought hole. We might also do some labeling where we put a negative term or name on us. I'm a loser, I'm awkward, I'm cringy. When we label ourselves, it keeps us stuck. It keeps us from stretching out and meeting new people and connecting with friends. The question you need to ask yourself is, does this word apply to me all the time and in every situation? Another thought hole is spotlighting, that feeling where you think everybody is noticing you or understands how you're thinking and feeling. If you notice the spotlight effect is happening to you, you can ask yourself, what else are people paying attention to other than me? And do people really care that much about what I'm doing? And remember, everyone feels this awkward feeling. It's not just you. Maybe you're in the thought hole of mind reading where you think you know what other people are thinking or will think. This thought hole can really keep us trapped. Here are some questions to help you get out of this thought hole. What evidence do I have that this is what people are really thinking about or will think about? You might also be doing a little negative comparison. Negative comparison is if when we compare ourselves to others who are popular or successful. To climb out of this thought hole, you can ask yourself, am I comparing myself to others in a way that makes me feel more negative about myself? And social perfectionism is another thought hole. It's the belief that mistakes are unacceptable. You can shift out of this thought hole by asking yourself, am I asking more of myself than I would ask of others? I know it can feel very tough when you are feeling lonely and when you are feeling that you are disconnected or not chosen by your classmates, friends, or peers. You are not alone. I'm so glad that you're here. And there's so many things that you can do to stretch outside of that comfort zone. One of the first things that you can do is simply smile at those around you. Having that warm smile is a way to open up and make yourself appear approachable. Starting small by saying hi to the people that you see around you. Getting out and building different connections other than those at school can be very important. If you have a very close and connected friendship circle, as some of you do, it can be important to make sure that we're branching out and developing other connections with other people. That can be done by joining a club, a sport. Maybe there is a course in your community that you might take. You might even want to volunteer for something that you're passionate about. I hope that this has been helpful. If you need help or support because you're feeling lonely, please let us know on the community page. We want to support you. You're part of this tribe, so that means you aren't alone. There's lots of girls cheering you on, and I'm here cheering you on as well. 
I hope that you have an amazing week ahead, continue to live life bravely, and I can't wait to see you on our next call.